Welcome to our session today. What we're going to talk about today is gear that didn't work out. <laughs> As a reviewer of audio gear and lighting gear, a lot of times I will get free gear from manufacturers. I disclose that in the videos so that you're aware of that. But every once in a while we get a piece of gear that just doesn't pan out, doesn't work well. And it's a little bit awkward because I it generally what I'll do is I'll send the gear back to the manufacturer or I'll just tell them, look, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to review this. So... <laughs> Uh, what I wanted to do today is talk about some of the gear that I reviewed that just didn't work out. And my purpose in doing this is not to roast any of those manufacturers. It's not to criticize them. Um, it's just to provide them some feedback and to provide you with some feedback with some of my own personal experiences with these particular pieces of gear. Um, I'm not here to say don't buy them. I'm not here to say buy them. I'm just going to tell you what my experience was with them, and hopefully that will be useful for them to help improve that gear in the future. So, and the part of what kind of motivated motivated me to do this today was that I have had um, a couple of questions about specific things, namely some wireless microphone systems, and I wanted to talk about those. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of those really quickly here. All right, first up we have the Ceramonic UW Mic 9 RX9. Um, it's basically a, a dual uh, transmitter with a single dual receiver. Um, this is a UHF system, so that is to say it, it transmits via analog. And I actually got two of these different kits. The first one they sent me, I had lots of problems with. I was just getting this sort of clicking noise every few seconds. It wasn't the same as a dropout. It was a different kind of noise, and I'm not sure what it was. Um, and I got that same experience both here at my home, which is a fair, we live in a fairly rural area. And then also when I took it down into a more urban area, into an office setting, same issue there. So really not sure what was going on. So I contacted Ceremonic and said, hey, I'm having all sorts of problems with this. Here are the symptoms. And they said, okay, we'll send you a new one. So, um, so that was cool. So they sent me a second one and the exact same issue, exact same issue, same again, that clicking every few minutes and um, lots of lots of problems. So in any case, um, that was the first one. So again, this one's odd because I saw other, a variety of other reviewers actually look at this and they actually had a fairly good experience with it. So I don't have a good explanation for that. Where I live, I haven't had the same issue with other systems, including UHF systems like the Sennheiser G3. Never had an issue with it. Um, so I'm really not sure what to make of it. So that's just my experience with that. Next one was the Ceremonic VMic, or yeah, VMic Link 5. This is their digital 5.8 gigahertz wireless lavalier system. This one actually had three transmitters and a single tri or triple receiver. Um, and this one was this one, the problem I had with this one was that I just couldn't hold a signal. Lots of dropouts. And 5.8 gigahertz is a pretty tricky frequency to use for wireless transmission for things like this because my understanding is that with 5.8 gigahertz, which is generally an open frequency, at least in the United States here, um, that, and by open I mean that it's, that you don't have to have a license to operate in that frequency. The problem is, is that if you get anything that blocks line of sight, things don't work very well. So that's the big challenge with using that frequency. And I, again, I had lots of problems getting this one to connect and stay connected. So um, just not reliable enough for production use. Next one is, uh, was a Comica. And in this particular case, it's this Dual Lav D03. Now, the reason I wanted to review this one is a, a question I get a lot is, hey, how can I record two lavalier microphones with my camera? And, you know, a lot of times people are talking about some sort of mirrorless hybrid camera, maybe a DSLR that has one microphone input. And the Comica, Comica had contacted me and said, hey, do you want to review this? It's a mixer for two lavalier microphones. And I thought, oh, that's cool. Let's, let's take a look at it. And it's a really small form factor. It actually has a, I believe it has a belt clip on it. Yeah, you can hook it on your belt. Um, two microphone inputs. It has a headphone output, which is also shared as a power source. So it has an inbuilt battery, I believe. And you can recharge via one of those ports with this proprietary cable. And then the other port is the output to the camera. When I got it, what I realized is, is it's not a mixer. Well, it's a mixer <laughs> only from the standpoint that you plug two microphones into it and it sends a single output. What it doesn't have and what they had told me it did have were separate 
um, input or gain controls or trim controls for each of the microphones. It does not have that. And so I wrote back to them and said, well, this isn't really what I thought it was. Um, and they said, well, you either have to review it or you have to buy it. And at that point, I was not happy with the situation. So I said, fine, I'll buy the thing. And I gave it away to someone who could potentially use it with the, all the frustration that would come along with it. Um, Comica is an interesting company. They call themselves, let's see, they say professional audio equipment. I think that's probably a little bit of a stretch. I think it really appeals more to um, filming enthusiasts. I, you know, obviously based on their advertisements here, you can or their <laughs> their marketing material here on their website, you can see it's really probably not aimed at professionals. So in any case, those were some of exper the experiences I've had with some audio gear. Let's talk about one gimbal. Um, this one I had a lot of questions about as well. It's called the Steady Cross, and this is a unique stabilizer. Got it right here, actually. You can see it's a dual handle. Um, it's got, um, what's unique about this is it does not require, it does not use any batteries. Instead, it uses counterweights uh, like a traditional stabilizer, like a steady cam or something like that. And in addition to that, um, it also has a magnet that helps it to smooth out the pan axis, this axis right here. And that magnet is down here in the bottom section. Um, so anyway, it's kind of an interesting design. Um, it's obviously for smaller cameras, so it's going to be for things like a Panasonic GH5 or maybe a smaller Sony. Um, and that's the idea. And actually, I had a pretty good experience with this from the standpoint that it did provide relatively smooth footage. That was cool. I really liked that about it. What uh, was problematic for me, though, was that the pan axis, which is supposed to be smoothed out by the magnet, um, made things really jerky. So it, it kind of had a jerky... Uh, look to it once I got the footage. So that didn't pan out so well. Actually, I need to switch back so that you can see what I'm talking about. Um, there we go. All right. So that's what the, the steady, or, yeah, steady Cross looks like. Um, and again, just to kind of demonstrate here, you can see as I turn it, it has this sort of smoothing action that's controlled by this magnet. It's sort of a ring of magnets down here in the base. So anyway, that's the Steady Cross. Um, we, I, I, I contacted the manufacturer and we kind of talked through things a little bit. And what we, one, one of the things was that I was trying it out in the middle of winter here. So it was January and February here. I live at 6,000 feet altitude. I was using it outdoors. So it was well below freezing. And um, they said, well, that's probably the issue that you're running into. I mean, you're getting that jerkiness because the, you know, maybe the grease in one of the um, the bearings is kind of sticking. So, um, uh, so that anyway, that didn't work out. And actually, I used it indoors as well, and I was getting the same effect. So I don't really think that was the issue. And so what we agreed upon is I'm actually going to give that to my brother to review. <laughs> and the reason I'm going to do that is that he has more experience with uh, the kind of the physical gravity weight counterweight driven stabilizers. He's done a lot more of that work than I have. And so we're going to give that over to him and see what his experience is with it so far. So there's some thoughts on that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and come to the comments here. We've got a whole bunch of comments. Cool. Okay. Let's see. All right. Got Laron Cooper. What's up? It's good to hear from you, Laron. Um, Moataz Metro. Where's my sound got at? <laughs> Sadler. Yo. Um, thanks for answering my question. This is from Debt Free Homesteaders. Thanks for answering my question about connecting my Zoom H4n to my Canon 100D. You bet. All mics up for Curtis. <laughs> um, are you at NAB? I'm not at NAB yet. Um, I will be going. I'm leaving out uh, to head out tomorrow. So if you're going to be there, I'd love to say hello. Um, where we can meet up, I will be speaking with Ted Sim over at Aperture on Monday night at 5 p.m. So if you are there and you'll be there Monday night, we'd love to say hello. So come on over at 5 p.m. to the Aperture booth. We'll talk to you there. Uh, DC Patterson, I've had the displeasure of using Ceremonic TX9. Yes. Okay. That was, um, sounds like your experience may have been fairly similar to mine. Um, all right. I'm interested in the upcoming Deity Wireless, same config, I agree. In fact, speaking of Deity Wireless, 
Um, we just got our production copy. So I had, a, I had an early copy. I, I did some beta work for them, beta testing, if you will. And we now have the, um, what is supposed to be the production version. This will be, start. I think it starts shipping in just a um, week after NAB. So not this week, not this coming week, but the week after, I believe. And uh, let's just show you a couple of things here. Here is the dual channel receiver without the antennas on. They have some SMA type antennas you can attach. It also has internal antennas. So you have two antennas per channel. Um, and so the way this works is you can't generally send an antenna very well through metal. And this is an all metal body around this part. And then it's plastic on the sides and on the top so that those internal antennas um, can also communicate obviously. Um, so you get the best kind of a both worlds where you get a pretty tough build. You know, it's a really, it's, it's a nice solid build, um, but you also get the benefit of being able to communicate through the plastic there. So um, the nice thing about this that is different than a lot of other systems is you can control both of the transmitters from the receiver, which is nice. And I'm talking about setting the gain, the input gain, turning the limiters on and off um, and things like that. So you have kind of the important controls available to change from the transmitter. So you don't, if you've got it hidden under um, some talent's clothing, you don't have to go dig it out and change settings and kind of get the wardrobe back in place. You can manage this all from the uh, receiver itself, which is very cool. Here's a transmitter. There are two of these in the kit, as you can see. Um, these also have a connector for kind of a whip antenna. Looks like that. Pretty similar to what you would see, for example, on a Sennheiser G3 or G4. Um, these have a similar build in terms of uh, metal on the front and back, uh, nice belt clip kind of built in, and then plastic on the sides and top, again, for the dual um, antenna design. So that's that. Uh, let's see, what else is in the kit here? I don't really do unboxings, but I, <laughs> I guess I'm kind of sharing with you what you can expect. Uh, two USB cables. So you've got USB-A, the blue connector, so it looks like it's USB-3, to USB-C on the other side. And the USB-C plugs into these units here. For those that aren't aware, these have inbuilt lithium-ion batteries. And I have done some tests. And what was interesting is that the transmitters actually lasted longer than the receiver, which is very unusual. Usually, in my experience, the transmitters will run out before the receiver. And in this case, I, I got about 11 hours on the receiver. So that's gonna that's pretty pretty darn good. I think I was when I first heard there were gonna be inbuilt batteries, I was a little disappointed. I thought, ugh, they're probably only gonna last four or five hours or something like that. But they actually I got eleven hours on that, and the transmitters were still going. So um, that's pretty cool. Um, there's a little uh, hot shoe mount, so you can mount that on top of your camera if the receiver on top of your camera if you want to do that. Output cable, we have a locking 3.5 millimeter TRS to TRS. This is what would plug into your hybrid camera or mirrorless camera or DSLR. And then we also have, um, and you can also route that. So when you're sending it into your camera, say for example, you are using both transmitters, you can route it so that it's either a mono, so it's already mixed the audio together, or you can send one of the channels to the left channel and the other to the right channel so you can still mix it in post. That's cool. You have two 3.5 millimeter to XLR balanced output cables. So if you are going into a, a recorder or a camera with um, XLR inputs, you've got those. And then it also does come with a couple of lavalier microphones. Um, this, they're fairly large-ish, um, medium, I guess medium size. They're not, they're not tiny. So uh, hiding them is gonna be a little bit more work, I would think. And they come with this windscreen and the alligator clips and um, 3.5 millimeter meter, meter locking plug as well. So those are looking, we'll see how those sound. Um, they did change those from the original kit I got and I just got this yesterday. So I haven't had a chance to try this out yet. So look for that, that review is coming up soon. I'll be talking to Andrew at NAB once we get there. Um, I have an appointment set up to talk with him I believe on Monday. So we're, we're going to have a review of that coming up here soon. So thanks for those comments. All right, what else have we got? Sarah Monica, more like Sarah Monica. <laughs> um, what state do you live in? I 
thought Florida, but terrain looks like Utah. It is Utah, yes. We're up in the mountains in Utah. The new Rode Wireless Go looks nice. 2TX would be nice, though. Agreed. Yep. Um, it's a, it's made to be a super simple system, so I think that's more of a com competitor with the Sennheiser uh, XSWD, which we reviewed just a few weeks ago. And I'll be talking to Ryan Burke when we're at NAB about that one as well. Uh, yeah, David asked the same thing. You have uh, What are your thoughts? I think it's going to be a competitor to the XSWD. So really good, I think, for people that are, you know, solo shooters and things of that nature where you, you don't really have, you know, and you want a very simple kind of setup. Um, some people were confused. You, the, the transmitter does have a built-in microphone, but you can connect a regular 3.5 millimeter TRS lavalier microphone to that as well. So you're not tied to using that inbuilt microphone, but you can use it if you need to. So you have a couple of options there. That's kind of a unique, interesting feature, I think. Um... All right. Why didn't you just review it and say it had that problem? Um, well, uh, that's a good question. I think it's a fair question. Um, I That's why I'm talking about it now. So if it's, I think I'm going to do this periodically. So if I have problems with various gear, I'll do something more like a wrap-up like this. It takes a ton of work to do a full review, and if it's going to be a product that's not that I couldn't recommend to people, I don't want to go th through that trouble. I would rather spend time and spend your time talking about gear that's going to be useful. However, what I it did occur to me, okay, yeah, we need to talk about the gear that didn't work out as well. I'm going to do that in sessions like this rather than commit to doing a full-blown review for them. So um, that's that's my reasoning. I hope that makes sense. So that's how I'm thinking of it. Um, all right, just went live, it is interesting, uh, only just started. How much money? I think that was in regards to the Steady Cross that we talked about just a few minutes ago. Let me grab that here again. So for the stabilizer here, if you're curious about that, that's actually a Indiegogo project. So. Um, you can find that. I think if you make a contribution now to their project, you, it will cost $249 US. So that's that one there. Uh, Comica means funny or comedian in Spanish. Okay. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, oh, yeah. One other thing David Gomez said, did any of you notice the announcement Rode Video, uh, the wireless Go mic? They said you can use wireless headphones to monitor and yeah, like AirPods. Exactly. Yeah, you can. And that sounds like a pretty nice feature as well. So that'll make things nice. I, I would expect some latency, so don't expect a perfect experience. Um, it almost always happens that way when, you, when you're transmitting wirelessly. There's some weight latency there. And then to the AirPods, there's going to be a little bit of latency potentially there too. So we'll see how that pans out. Oh, and then they, and then they uploaded a new video and they removed that feature. Okay, I didn't see that. I'll have to ask Ryan about that. Um, and didn't see the re-edit, so that's interesting. Good morning, and it's uh, Korea for Steve. Thanks, Steve. Live on Saturday made my day for the Tech Vault. Thanks for joining us. And Dan, live on YouTube. Never seen your live show. Julian Krauss. Hi, everybody. Hope you all doing well. Hi, Julian. It's good to hear from you. Insane Jughead, didn't think you'd be reading the comments. I should have thought of something funny to say. Yes, you should have, Insane Jughead, because you usually have the best comments, uh, the funniest ones by far. Uh, do you know if, if Canon has scheduled a press event at NAB? Sony and Panasonic are tomorrow. Blackmagic is Monday. I haven't heard anything from Canon. Honestly, the, Canon, or the camera manufacturers don't usually contact me um, since I'm not really a camera reviewer, but I'll keep my ear open for that. Um, interesting regarding the Ceremonic UW Mic 9. I've had mine for a couple of years with no major issues. The dual receiver is real nice for recording two speakers into one camera. I'm really glad you said that because, again, I had heard other people say they've had a pretty good experience with it. Um, so I, I don't know how to explain that. Um, I'm glad to hear that, that it's working well for you, especially since you put your money on it. Um, so that's good news. Um... 
Moata's Metro. Ooh, that looks like some James Bond gadgets. Yes, indeed. Willow. Um, hi, Curtis. How do you like the Audio Limited A10 so far? I love it. It has never failed me. I've never had any dropouts in during production. Um, I once walked around the opposite side of a brick building, and it did cut out some there. Not surprising. Um, but other than that, it has been top-notch. Audio quality is fantastic, and it's been rock solid. So, all right. Next up from Charles Voiceover. Could you please cover Telefunken's new Alchemy microphone series at NAB if you can? No one has done it yet. I'll take a look and see what I can find here, or when I'm there. Uh, these comments keep coming in and moving. Okay. <laughs> Does Deity Wireless accept my Sennheiser lavs? I asked uh, Andrew at Deity that already, and yes, it is wired the same as the Sennheiser, 3.5 millimeter, so the same as for the G3 and the G4, so it should accept those. And in fact, on the beta unit that I used, I used um, a Senken Cost 11D, which, which was wired for Sennheiser. So yes, it, I can confirm it works. Um, one episode, could you discuss a two-person interview set up using two shotgun mics, please? I found an old video you had with a few diagrams. Yeah. You bet. That's a great idea. 11 hours is solid on the battery time for the transmitter for the deity. Agreed. Okay. Danny, in market for new wireless because all my gear was 600 megahertz. Yes, here in the United States, unfortunately, 600 megahertz is no longer usable for us. We have to go to different frequencies, so... All right. Anyone know of a browser plugin that will reduce echo in a YouTube video? Um, Isotope RX does that. There are some others out there, Frank, that I have. Oh, yeah, um, Acusanus has one that works okay. Um, and as always, it's better to address it in during production by using sound blankets if you can, rather than try to remove it in post. They are mediocre at best. Even Isotope, which is top-notch on a lot of things, um, when it comes to reverb removal, still not perfect and you can remove a lot but then it starts to sound robotic and then you back it off and you're like well it's not removing that much so it's a little bit tricky uh any recommendation for a solid variable nd funny you should ask um, i've had very good luck with the aurora aperture power xnd they have a new series of them uh, this is the mark ii version i actually really enjoyed the mark one version um, but the I just got this in, in a couple of days ago, so I'll be putting that to the test as well. But the first version was really good. Have you ever tried the Ceremonic 5.8 gigahertz system? Yes, you probably joined just a little bit late. And in fact, I had a bad experience with that as well. Recommend you go back and listen to the session over for that. Um, Tommy Calloway, thanks very much for joining. I shoot the Sony Z90. Talk about the sound features. I have never used the Z90, so I'm sorry, Joe, but I don't know anything about that. Curtis, any thoughts on the Zcam E2? No, unfortunately not yet. Um, I have had some requests, and I'm going to try and go stop by and see if what I can find out at NAB about that. All right, Tommy, hope to see you at NAB, and we'll give you a high five. Sounds good. <laughs> New Road looks good for small, uh, this is Danny again. New Road looks good for small breakout meeting rooms, short throws, low cost, not production. Um, yeah, if I'm getting paid for a job, I'm probably not gonna rely on that, but I think it could be great for a lot of enthusiast filmmakers. Um, somebody here just pre, Kenneth just pre-ordered his Rode Wireless Go. Um, what are you most expecting at NAB from George? Um, well, I think, I can't, uh, there, a lot of the companies have already made their announcements, so there's some pretty exciting stuff, obviously. I'm pretty excited about the Aperture um, RGB light. We'll see what that ends up looking like. Um, and I, there's something from Zoom. I can't talk about it yet, um, but there are rumors out there you may have heard, you may not have heard, but I will be covering that. I'm meeting with Samuel at Zoom on Monday to talk about that. Um, so in any case, those, those are probably the things that I think the zoom one I'm pretty excited about. I wish I could talk about it now, but I can't. 
Uh, Andrew says, oh, when I said, why didn't you review it, you say it and say it was bad, specifically meant the product they made you pay for instead of reviewing, but maybe the same reason, I guess. Yeah, I think, Andrew, that that was a case where I had, I've just, honestly, I don't think I'm going to re- review any more Comica things. I just had a bad experience with them. Hopefully, if some of you are using Comica gear, it's fine. I actually reviewed one of their dual-headed lavalier microphones, kind of consumer-grade microphone a while back, and it was fine. Um, I think it's a it's a fine thing for someone who's on a very tight budget. But first of all, that they call their stuff professional audio gear is a little bit dodgy. And the way they treated me was I, I didn't appreciate. So there's that. Uh, for those that are asking, the Wireless Go is $199 pre-order. So thanks for those that's, that came up with that. Um, be interesting to see the New Zealand pricing. Alberto... Hola from the Estados Unidos. Um, yes, Steady Cross. Uh, thanks. Let's see here. Mr. Hang, when will you be at NAB? I'm leaving tomorrow, and I should be there through Wednesday. So hopefully we'll see you again this year. Great to see you live. Your vids are so helpful for helping my page. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate that. Have you heard anything about the Marantz blimp? It looks like the same as the road, but half the price. I have not. Um, so there's another thing for me to check out when I'm at NAB. Uh, Danny notes, Utah is frequency congested on Wasatch Front to the point of saturation. Doug Johnson in Orem is tested. I had okay results last September in Sandy Hyatt House on 600 megahertz Sennheiser, but that day gone. Um, you know, it's interesting with my... A good point on the Utah front being pretty saturated. I actually had very good luck with my uh, audio limited, or yeah, A10 system. So, and actually, Roadlink has done pretty well for me too, for the most part. And in fact, thinking back, um, I've had a uh, that that was uh, I did use Sennheiser several times on the Wasatch front, and don't remember. Actually, I think there was one time I had an issue, but. It's a good point, Danny. Yeah, I think a lot of the urban areas are just fully saturated. So, um, Will you be putting up a master list of all the links? Yes, I will do that. Best sounding live stream ever. Thank you. Uh, by the way, for those that are curious, we are using a MixPre, uh, Shure SM7B, and that's being routed out of the MixPre into my Panasonic GH5S. So if you were curious about how we're doing the sound here. Um, so that's how we're doing it. Curtis Judd, I'm new to all this. I plan on shooting my own videos as well. Could you please talk about your setup and the current sound system that you're using at the moment? There you go. It's a Sound Devices Mix Pre 10T, um, but it sounds it, sound quality wise, it's exact same as the Mix Pre 3 or 6. And then I'm routing the output of that into the input on my Panasonic GH5S. So, all right. Uh, comments keep coming in and resetting the window here. Let me see if I can pull this down and make it a little longer <laughs> so it doesn't keep resetting itself. Um, actually, we're going to start. Here we go. Okay, a couple of questions about my reaction to the sound devices Scorpio. So this is a just to put it in perspective, this is a nine thousand dollar recorder mixer from Sound Devices. It's their new kind of flagship recorder. It's the name of the game on that one is all about massive numbers of inputs and outputs. It looks like they've redesigned the preamps as well. Don't know how they're going to improve over the six hundred series preamps, but that's cool. They also have some cool features in there in terms of um, some things for dual uh, or bu- basically duplex com support as well, which looks interesting. Um, AES input and output. It really looks like a fantastic mixer. Wish I could get one. Don't have the budget for one. And actually, honestly, for most of the jobs I do, not a lot of need for someone something with that many inputs and outputs. Oh yeah, Dante, um, dual Dante um, inputs. So you have basically the ability to connect to network-based um, audio sources and um, destinations. So that's pretty cool for the for the pros. It really looks like an interesting thing. We will be going to the Sound Devices booth. Um, Again, I don't know how many of you that actually applies to the Scorpio, but it looks cool. What I would love to see is basically a Scorpio light, a smaller version of that. 
and then I would be very tempted to upgrade my 633. So um, those are my thoughts on that. David Gomez, how long are the lav mic cables on the new Deity wireless combo? Because the standalone ALAV has a long 5 meter wire to hide. Um, no, this one's not nearly that long. I think you're closer to the about one meter, like a like a yard, basically. They're they're pretty pretty manageable. They're not anything like the ALAV. Um, Charles says that your YouTube sound and video looks spectacular. Um, actually, I'm not using OBS. I am using a, an application on Mac that is called Ecam Live, and we've had a pretty good experience with it so far. So I, I think I'm going to stick with that. <laughs> Uh, see, George, we'll see you on the uh, show floor. Wheels up in the AM. You got it, man. Looking forward to the Zoom. Curtis would love a video on the live stream setup you have. Best sounding stream ever. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I think that sounds like there's a theme there. So we'll add that to the list and talk about how to do the live setup. Emmanuel Lopez. Uh, hi from Puerto Rico. Thanks for joining today. All right. Hello from France. From Hugo, I would like to learn how to do, this is from Keith Kuhn. Keith, good to hear from you. I'd like to hear how you do, how to do digital cinema package when I make a movie for a theater. Do you have any clue about this? I've been studying, it's quite complex. Oh, a digital cinema package. I do not have experience doing that, Keith. Um, when I work on films that are going to theater, I'm usually the sound mixer, the post sound mixer. And so I deliver my final mix and it is usually somebody else that takes care of that. So I apologize. I don't, it is fairly complex from what I've read. Um, so I wish I had more information for you on that, but that's something I still need to learn about too. Hello to Sue from London. Good to hear from you. Uh, Hang is there on Monday, flying in on Sunday round four. Wow. That's a quick in and out, but we'll hopefully see you there, Mr. Hang. Curtis, hi from Chile. Chile, I'm waiting for the Rode Wireless Go review. We'll definitely have that for you. That is actually shipping to me. It's on its way now, so it should be here, I think, when I get back from NAB. So there we go. Um, Wireless Go from Rode is 295 US, or sorry, 295 New Zealand dollars. Um, so for those that were interested. Basic Filmmaker had us send him questions that he would then relate to the vendors at NAB. I had a whole laundry list of things. I now take pity on what I put him through. <laughs> Me too. I'm not asking. <laughs> Actually, there are a few things I will I will be asking about. Uh, Flood of Sins. Hey, Curtis. Good to good to hear from you there. Here comes the Judd. Dean Pettit. Curtis, is there such a thing as a small inline EQ to go between an on-camera mic like a Rode or a Movo? So camera. Whoops, it got bumped here. So camera recorded audio wouldn't suck as much as and so helping to speed up the editing. Whew. There are little in line, um, uh, not not so much for the like the lavalier microphones. I have seen them for XLR microphones, and they're usually specific to a, a particular make of microphone. So Sennheiser has some. I've seen them for Sheps as well, but I haven't really seen any for like 3.5 millimeter microphone inputs. I'll keep my eye out for that, Dean. Though that's a good question. Any plans to review the Nice Photo HA3300B, a competitor to the Aperture 300D? I hadn't even heard of it, so I'm going to have to add that to my list. Thank you for that. Mapios? I think you're using that new Rode Podcaster rig that you reviewed. No, actually, the, today is the Mix Pre. Um, I do still have that, and I still love it, and I use it on some in some cases, but in this case, it's easier to send the audio to camera, so it's all perfectly in sync for a live stream. Uh, what are you using to encode the stream? So the stream coming out of the Panasonic is uh, going into via HDMI out of the Panasonic GH5S into an AJA UTAP HDMI, and that connects USB to the computer. So <clears throat> again, the audio is routed into the camera, so everything coming out of that HDMI is going into the Ecamm Live app, and that's what's doing the encoding there. All right. I uh, just bought an Asdem SMX30, but I find it horribly noisy. Should I sell it and buy a Deity VMic D3 instead? If you just bought it, I would try to return it if you can. I would prefer definitely the D3. I prefer the sound of that over the, um, the Asden personally. 
Uh, recommendation for a good global shutter 4K video cam. Oof. No, I'm afraid not. Um, global shutter video cams are usually the higher-end cinema, cinema cameras, I think. I, I don't really know. Apologize there. After using the Ceramonic U-Mic 9 and having the antennas crack on the receiver, I upgraded to the Sony dual Lav system. I still have the Ceramonic for backup. Happy with Sony. Yeah, definitely. I think you're talking about the PO3D dual channel receiver. That's a pretty good one. Deity Connect. So far, I think it's good. Um, but I get, again, I, get, I need to put it to greater use before we can uh, finalize my, my recommendation there. Raul says, I'm a newbie. I just purchased an 8x8 green screen. What light should I use to light it? Is a flood light better than a spotlight? Yes, definitely want a flood in that case. You want to light that uh, backdrop as evenly as possible, and that's what a flood will do for you. So uh, something like the Aperture 120 is a good choice there. I don't know what your budget is, but that's a good option. Some of the um, some of the like flexible panels, like um, Falcon Eyes makes some. Those are a little bit more budget oriented, and those could be a good option as well. If you take a, a look, if you go to my channel and do a search for Falcon Eyes, you'll see several of those there. All right, Curtis Judd, the three dot hamburger button at the upper right of the chat has a pop out. I'm actually using the Ecamm live uh, comments stream. So still some things to, I appreciate the input there. I'll take a look at that. All right, VNH, here I come. <laughs> um, Curtis, when or will you be integrating the Rode Podcaster you reviewed last month? Um, I've actually been using it on my secondary channel um, that's associated with my school, schoollearn.learnlightandsound.com. We do periodic podcasts, and that's what I usually use the Rodecaster for, if that's what you're talking about there. So definitely have it already put to use. Is it worth upgrading? This is from DB Vol. Is it worth upgrading from a Deity S Mic 2 to the famous Sennheiser MKH 416 for indie film productions? Well, if you have the budget, I think that's a fine choice. The thing that the Sennheiser has going for it um, is I think it has a slightly different sound. It depends on, you don't hear it. It depends on some people's voices don't sound that different on it, but some do. Um, my voice has a little bit of a mid-range um, kind of focus, and that that works probably better with the Sennheiser, I would say. Um, but the other thing that the Sennheiser MKH 416 gets you is, or I think two things. Number one, it's an RF bias design, so it's going to hold up a lot better in high humidity situations. That's one thing. Number two, um, it has a more directional polar pattern, so it's a little bit better at rejecting things off to the sides into the rear. So... All right. Any good alternatives to Isotope RX? Accusonus has a variety of plugins. If you do a search on my channel for that, you'll see we, we talked about some of those. They're a lot less expensive. They're not as comprehensive. Um, but if you need something that can do, you know, de-reverb and things of that nature, and it has very good noise reduction as well, that's worth looking at. However, what I would also keep in mind is that um, Isotope has gotten a lot more aggressive on the pricing for RX lately, especially RX elements, which you can now buy especially certain times of the year, they put it on sale and you can buy it for well under $100. So it's probably worth uh, taking a look at that. All right, any plans? Uh, let's see, let's go back here. I usually shoot with a Zoom H6, this is from Arhan, uh, with a Zoom H6 and a couple of Sony cameras. What's the best and cheapest way for me to get time code sync? Whew. Tentacle sync is probably the cheapest way. It's not, it's not, um, there's still a price there. <laughs> I would also say this about time code. Um, I find time code, there's some post work, especially if you're gonna use something like a Zoom H6, which doesn't have a proper time code input. So you have to use up one of the audio channels, one of the audio inputs to record time code to the recording. And um, that means that in post, you have to convert that from audio time code over to something that the, your non-linear editor can use. I find that DaVinci Resolve has that capability. DaVinci Resolve is free, but the problem is, is that it doesn't work too often. Um, from my perspective, it works about 50% of the time. So that's not something you could rely on necessarily. So I would say Tentacle Sync is probably the cheapest way. What are your thoughts on the new Ursa Mini Pro G2? And will you be upgrading to it? I think it's a fine little evolutionary step. 
I don't use shoot a lot of high frame rate, which is really kind of, I think, one of the biggest things that it does. There are a couple of other things. I think the USB-C, now you can record to an SSD, external SSD, USB-C drive. I don't really need that because I have the internal SSD recorder. And in fact, um, I even don't use that very often. I usually just use a CFast card. So uh, worth it or not, or not, hello. It's good to hear from you. Isotope RX loudness, not cool with Final Cut Pro 10. Hoping for an announcement at NAB. Yeah, that's a good point. It does not have that integration into Final Cut Pro 10. And Final Cut Pro 10 desperately needs some proper audio loudness tools. In fact, that's become a bit of a frustration for me. So, all right. All right, uh, Keith Kuhn, on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the best, how would you rate the condenser mics on the H4N Zoom? Uh, well, that kind of depends on for what. Um, for ambient sound, I think they're okay. Probably six out of 10. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Benham talks about a passive mini TRS mixer, pocket mixer, P-O-K-K-E-T mixer. Does its job and is, uh, I assume you mean dual channel there. So that's cool. What wireless audio would you recommend for Canon M50 YouTuber? Um, that's a good question. I think we have a couple. So we, we reviewed the XS um, Digital from Sennheiser a couple weeks ago. That's one to consider. Roadlink is another to consider. The nice thing about Roadlink is it has the ability to adjust the gain. The, the thing about the Sennheiser is that it's super easy to use. There are basically no settings on it. Um, and if you don't aren't recording any really loud sounds and you're not recording with a Panasonic GH series camera, then I think you're probably going to be fine with that. Um, but otherwise, uh, we also have the, the Rode Wireless Go, which I'll be reviewing here in the next few weeks. So I don't let me let me review that one before I make a recommendation, but I think they're going to kind of fit different circumstances for your work, the for the homesteading um, stuff that you're doing. I would probably look at the road link would be my probably be my first choice there. Uh, what's the cheap way to light a green screen? I would look at the Falcon Eyes LED, the fabric panels. Those are pretty good. Uh, Keith Kuhn, what in your opinion, which is more sensitive, a condenser mic or a dynamic mic? Well. Generally, the, the condenser mics have hotter output signals, if that's what you mean. Dynamic mics have their place, though. That's what we're using here today um, because they're, well, yeah, they have their place <laughs> for things like this, voiceover and, and broadcast types of things. All uh, right. Any plans to review Color Spike RGB animated lights? I hadn't heard of those, so I'll have to put those on my list as well. All right, I think... We're probably at a point where we need to stop, so I apologize. Um, oh, wait, no, there are a couple more here. Just a second here. Let's get those, and then we'll wrap it up here. Have we exhausted all the good questions? Well, I have something to ask. How is your friend Curtis Judd today? Wish you the best, and to you too, insane Jughead. <laughs> um Satinder, it's good to hear from you. Thanks for joining us. Have you been using, uh, Henrik asks this, have you been using the GH5S with its time code via flash sync since the review? Any new thoughts or comments on this feature? I guess the new S1 has it as well. Um, I don't think they've updated that via firmware. Um, what I would like to see Panasonic do, I have not been using it. And the reason why I've not been using it is that it jam syncs the real time clock in the Panasonic GH5 and then that clock drifts. So it's not very useful other than just getting you kind of in the ballpark, um, but I wouldn't use it to kind of rely on to get a good time code sync. Um, so the answer is I have not been using it. It looks like the new S1 will have it as well. Um, I'll have to try that out again. I don't think they've made any changes to it, but what I would like to see them do is make it so that it's a, just a time code reader. That is to say you connect your time code generator to the camera and leave it connected through the entire shoot and the camera just reads from the external time code generator and writes that to the video file. That would be a lot more useful from my standpoint, and I hope that's what they did um, in the S1, and it would be great if they would do that in a, in a firmware update, but they haven't been listening to me. <laughs> I actually do have a friend, uh, he goes by Photo Joseph on YouTube, if you've heard of him. He is actually a Lumix, I think they call them luminaries, or whatever their sort of, um, their sponsored people are. Well, I can't remember what they call them, but... 
Um, I will probably talk to him about that. That would be a nice feature to see on that as well. All right, we have some questions about Zoda Godox Studio Flashes and what my opinion is. I have not used those, unfortunately. All right, Jeff just wants to say thanks for all the YouTube videos. You betcha. Jose Contreras, hi, how are you? Doing great, thanks, thanks for joining. Uh, hope to catch up with you at NAB. That's from Ryan. Ryan, that'd be great. Again, Aperture at 5 p.m. on Monday night. I'll be there talking with Ted Sim. And then afterwards, we'd love to say hello to all you guys if you're there. So that would be cool. Thanks for all you're doing in the lighting and sound world. You bet. And let's see. I bought the Zoom F8 after I saw your re reviews. Great videos you create. Very valuable. Thank you. Evangelist. Yes, thank you, Ike. <laughs> That's what they call them, the Evangelist. So the Lumix, I think Luminaries is their evangelism program. Do you know how to sync GemSync Panasonic EVA1 with tentacle syncs? I think throwing light, the answer to that is you'll want to keep the, gen the time code generator connected. I haven't used the EVA1 in particular, um, but that should have a proper time code input, I would think, because it is basically meant to be a cinema camera. So I don't think you want to jam sync it. I think you want to connect the time code generator and leave it on there. All right. I have a DR60D and want to do binaural recording. Should I upgrade to Mark II? Hmm. The Mark II has slightly cleaner preamps. Uh, binaural recording, though, I think you have to have a, you have to have binaural encoding, I think. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm not sure if you can just send it to a left and right channel, but maybe you can actually. I, I don't know enough about binaural recording to know for sure, um, but the, the basic benefit you get for going for the, to the Mark II is cleaner preamplifiers. So, Have you looked at doing any of the MXL mic mods or replacing the default capsules to get inexpensive hyper mics for filming? Um, I have thought of that, but I haven't had the budget to do that, and I've got so many microphones. <laughs> Um, how are you going to be doing this stream? I don't know. We're going to see how it goes. I have my experience in the past has been people have not been as enthusiastic about live streams um, because they're generally they're not as produced, they're not as uh, scripted and things of that nature. So it's kind of a different thing. It's a longer thing to watch to get lots of information. So we'll see. We'll see what people how people respond to it. Um, from Warren. Hey Warren, it's good to hear from you. Sorry you came in late. No worries. Uh, Lao, good to hear from you as well. How do you like the SM7B compared to the RE20? I think it's a little less um, sensitive in the, in the sibilant frequencies for my particular voice, so I like it quite a lot, actually. They're both great microphones, though. Did you upgrade the Black, pa Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K segment with your brother's thoughts on it? Um, I'm not sure what you mean by that. We did post one over on the Film Talk channel where we had a conversation about it, so you're welcome to go look at that. Um, he's been shooting with it for a little bit while longer now. We have not updated that, so... Ah, thank you, Danny. Danny says there's no encoding needing for bin binaural. It's all in the microphones, so having the microphones on your ears or on a dummy head ears um, is the answer, so good. Okay. Hey, can you review the MKH416 microphone? Jose, I will do that as soon as I have the budget to purchase one. Um, so, yes. Young and Sandy, thanks a lot for your videos. Start to be more serious with audio and pick up some lav mics and field recorders based on your reviews and tips. Excellent. Did you already get the pod mic for review? No, I haven't. Might need to think about doing that. Um, what's my channel strip today? So, the, the audio... Again, signal chain for those who haven't heard, Shure SM7B, Sound Devices Mix Pre 10T into the Panasonic GH5S. And which do I recommend, the Rode VideoMic Pro or the Deity VMic D3 Pro? Uh, those are those are close. The VideoMic Pro Plus, I think, is nice because it has that on-off, automatic on-off feature. The downside to that is that the battery runs out if you leave it, like, pretty much you have to recharge it before every shoot. Um, I like the flexibility of the, the D3 Pro from Deity though. And I like the, I probably like the sound on my particular voice from the road a little bit better, but they're both pretty good on that front as well. All right, people are saying thank you and, and worth it or not likes the live stream because you get this kind of 
real-time feedback. So that's cool. All right. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. We need to wrap it up. My wife says I need to go and cook dinner. So it's time to do that. And this is my last uh, day, full day with them for a couple of days. So I want to go spend some time with them. Thanks so much for joining. I hope that the things we talked about today were helpful for you. Get out there and make some great sound and some great videos. And we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody.